Hey guys, it's Kristen. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this witch candy bowl. So I feel like this really has dual purposes. You can either use it outside if you don't wanna hand out candy, um, or you can actually use it inside as a decoration and fill it with candy so when you have people come over, they can just take a piece. So we're gonna jump right into the video and then everything you would need to make this is gonna be listed in the video description. So the first thing you wanna do is get a piece of wood that's at least three quarter to an inch thick and pretty much you just need it to be a little bit bigger than your cauldron. So when it sits on it, there's a little bit of extra space like that. The next thing we need to do is drill two holes in here and you want it to be just big enough to fit your dowel. So this is a nine inch piece of wood. So this is gonna be at four and a half by one and a half. And that's where we're gonna drill. When you're drilling your holes, just make sure you go all the way through. We're gonna spray paint this whole thing black. Now we're gonna take two wooden dowels and we're gonna wrap them with electrical tape. Now when we go to put the electrical tape on, you wanna leave a little bit of a gap, about two inches, maybe three, um, because we're gonna put uh, wood glue on here and then put that in our stand. So we're gonna start right about here. So I'm gonna start by just going around the whole thing once, just to make sure it stays. And now I'm gonna rotate the dowel as I go around. And you want it to overlap slightly. So now I'm just gonna keep rotating the dowel as I go around. Um, this is gonna take a little bit of time, but it's not too long. The other way you can do it is just by taking the tape and going around it like that. Um, it's just you may not have as much control. So now when you're doing the orange tape, you're gonna do the same thing where you're gonna wrap it around the end once. So we'll put this right on the end and just go around one time like that. And now you're gonna kind of separate it and go on an angle. So let the tape go where it wants to go, but try to keep it even. So you can see how I'm like rolling it. You can kind of see as you roll it around, try to keep it the same. So this might take a little bit of finessing and you don't have to do it exactly the same distance, but you just wanna have gaps so that you have this orange and black spacing. So this is what it should look like when they're done and you want, like I said, little spaces on both ends uh, of the exposed wood so that we can use the wood glue in the next piece. So the next thing we're gonna do is make the feet by using a two by 10 piece of wood. So we are gonna be using a chop saw and then a jigsaw to cut these out. If you don't have either of those, you can just use a hand saw. It's gonna be a little more difficult, but you definitely can still cut the wood with this. Now, an alternative way to make the legs is by using two by sixes. And then what you would do is have one go straight down and you would take this other one and you would put it across like this. You kind of make an L shape. Um, it's not as attractive as doing it the other way, but this definitely would work to make a stand for it or the feet. So here we've cut the piece of wood at 16 inches across. And then I went four inches in on both sides and halfway. So I'll put all of the information on the size of the cuts that we're doing and my measurements in the video description. So the leg part on this is a little bit thicker than I would like, so we're gonna trim it down about one inch. So now that we have these cut, you can either leave them square like this, or you can round out the toe by taking something circular, a dish, a bowl, um, this is a lid from a coffee. So then you would just mark the corner right here. So for this, we started right around three inches and then curved it over. All right, so now the feet have been cut and we have to sand this down. So you can either use a hand sander, sandpaper, or if you have a belt or disc sander, this will be a lot faster. Now that we've got these all sanded down, we just need to drill a hole in the top. We ended up drilling about two to two and a half inches. Uh, for your depth, it really just depends on how tall you want your stand to be. Now just spray paint your legs. Because we went in a little further than I anticipated, I did have to remove a little bit more tape from our dowel. This is the type of wood glue that I'll be using for this project. Just apply the glue to the inside of the hole from your boot. If you have a small brush, it would be um, a little bit easier for you to rub along the edges. Then you'll wanna apply some glue to the actual dowel. And we're gonna do the same thing with the paintbrush and you're just gonna make sure the glue is completely covering everything. And then once you have the glue on both the hole and the dowel, you're gonna put that in and you will have some glue kind of squish out, which is fine but just make sure you get it in all the way. 
Then you'll wanna use a rag to wipe off the excess glue. I would not recommend using paper towel because it's just gonna rip and get stuck to the glue. So now you wanna set this aside somewhere where it can dry. And if you look at this one, it's slightly crooked and that's because of how we drilled the hole into the boot. So to fix that, you can use clamps um, to straighten that out. So here we have the legs clamped and the one that was a little bit crooked, we just bent it down slightly so now it'll be a little bit more straight. Once your glue has completely dried, we can go ahead and add the top on. You are gonna wanna twist your legs so that they're facing out a little bit because this will add more stability. We are gonna glue this upside down, but first we need to make sure that if these are flush, this will be level. So here you can see I've got this flush with the top and um, looking at this one right here, um, it's pretty close. It's not off enough that I'm gonna do anything. I think it'll be fine. Um, it is just a candy bowl, plus the candy bowl is gonna be attached to this, um, so that should be fine. If that is any more than that, I would definitely shave down one of your toggles or adjust it. So you're just gonna put your top down on the ground and make sure it's on a flat surface. The ground needs to be completely flat. Don't put this on a piece of cardboard or anything like that. But if you are worried about protecting your floors, you can use saran wrap or wax paper or tin foil, anything like that. Um, it doesn't matter what side this block is facing because we are gonna have to do one last coat of spray paint at the very end. Now we're gonna take some of our wood glue and do the same thing where we're just gonna go around the edge like this. Just make sure you really wanna make sure it's completely coated. So now I'm gonna apply some to the dowel as well. Make sure everything is covered. Then once you have the glue on both sides, go ahead and put your feet in. There we go. And make sure it goes all the way down. If you have to, hit the top. And then we will get this glue off in a second, but let's do the other side. Now you can kind of see with this one, um, the hole that we drilled was a little bit bigger, so it's moving around. So you are gonna need to lean this up against a wall um, or something that you just make sure it's stabilized. Now a couple other things I just wanna mention really quick. You can see this one has some bare wood. Um, once everything's dry, we are gonna add another layer of black electrical tape. And also, you wanna remove your block from whatever you put this on, if you did put it on something, um, after you know maybe four or five hours, once it's had some time to set up, because you don't want it to stick or glue to whatever surface you have it sitting on. So I ended up just putting a couple blocks up against it, and now it's standing up straight. Now once these have dried for about 24 hours, you can go ahead and stand them up. And then the last thing we need to do is just either sand or paint the top, or both. Um, so you can see I have a little bit of glue left over, so I might just take a little bit of sandpaper and file that down, and then we're gonna do one last coat of spray paint on the top. Just make sure when you are spray painting the top again that you put something to block the legs so you don't accidentally spray your legs. If you need to do any touch-ups on the feet like this, you can just use some painter's tape to cover the black and white stripes um, and then just do a quick little spray just to cover some of that glue residue that might be on there. So the spray paint is all dry on the top and I fixed the feet as well and so now we just need our bucket. Now with your bucket, you can either just simply set it right on there um, and then the weight of the candy will hold it down or you can put a little bit of either crazy glue, liquid nails or something else um, to attach this. So the other option is you could actually just drill right into the bottom of your bucket, but you just wanna make sure the plastic is not cold or else it could crack. So here you can see I have ours right now inside. We've got this Halloween thing going on, so when people come over to our house, they can just reach in and take some candy. But the other thing you can do, or you can put this outside if you don't really wanna hand out candy, but you do want candy available for kids. You can also use other Halloween bowls instead of this cauldron if you don't attach it to the base. So here's one of our other Halloween bowls that we've used in the past years. And you can see it still looks pretty cute on it. It just doesn't have the same effect, but it definitely would work if you couldn't find a cauldron. Now you can leave your bowl plain or you can add a Happy Halloween decal. The link for this particular one will be in the video description. So overall, I think it turned out really good and I absolutely love it. But just keep in mind, this is a project that's gonna take a little longer and you'll need some power tools and things like that. All right guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps. And then if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit this bell so you're alerted when I upload a video. I'll talk to you later.